guys, welcome back to another episode in the kitchen. Uh, this week we're going to kind of do a southern staple, uh, chicken fried steak and gravy. Except we're going to do a twist on it and do fried steak fingers, like the Dairy Queen meal that they make. Um, I'll do the uh, country fried steak and I'll show you how to make a butter gravy uh, to go with it. And um, I'll serve it up with some mashed potatoes, which I'll cook on the side. So let me get things set up and we'll be right back. So while I prep everything and get ready to go, I have a deep dish pan on the stove uh, with about three quarters of an inch to an inch of uh, oil in there. Warming up, getting ready to uh, shallow fry it. So we start off by making our strips. You get cube beef or cube steak and chop it up into strips. Or not, not chop it, but um, slice it. So you want strips about like that right there. So I'll set these on the side. This one's a little bit bigger, so we'll at least get three or four out of it. And let me get the rest of this cut up, and I'll be right back. All right, so I had these laid out. I'll set them off the side for a moment. We will make the seasoning for it. Um, about one tablespoon of garlic. Now, you're going to have enough to dust these, but also you want enough to add to your flour. So this will make quite a bit, but also a uh, good rule of thumb. If you can't see the seasoning in your flour, you don't have enough seasoning. You want about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of pepper. Uh, about a tablespoon of salt. And uh, I prefer uh, ranch seasoning. I'll put about a tablespoon and a half in there. There we go. Um, next up, onion powder, about a tablespoon. And um, I use mesquite seasoning from uh, Kent Rollins. I do like his mesquite seasoning. It comes out really good in a lot of things. Go kind of generous. I go about a tablespoon. And a little bit of smoked paprika. Like I said, a little bit goes a long way with smoked paprika. So, about a teaspoon there. That's about exactly what I was going to put in. 
So go ahead and give it a good mix and a good fork. Mix it all up, get the lumps out. And like I said, you just want to dust your raw steak first before you start uh, doing the uh, batter and flour. So like I said, get your lumps out. Still have pockets of some things in there. Give it another good mix. And then what you want to do, go ahead and pull your steaks back over. Give them a generous dusting. All the stuff that falls on the side, I'll end up... Uh, Picking the steak up and getting it up under there. We'll just use it to uh, season the other side of the steak. All right, so we'll let that sit for a few moments. And uh, go ahead and season the other side. All right, so we'll be back in just a bit. Next up, we want to go ahead and uh, mix our dredge. Uh, a little bit of flour, I'd say about two cups or more. Say about that much. Get the rest of it out. Your this the uh oh I'm not lost for words, I apologize. The order you're going to do this, you want to dust them first and then dip them in the egg egg wash and then uh dredge them again. So you're probably going to end up dredging them uh, at least twice. You want a good thick coat of uh, flour on it. So you have that. Go ahead and add two uh, tablespoons of cornstarch. One. and your remaining seasonings just go ahead and dump it in there go ahead and put that back over there so I have about that much seasoning left like I said just dump it in there Take your whisk, you want to go ahead and do this first before you start doing the eggs. Go ahead and blend it into the uh, flour. Make sure you blend it well because you do want to get that uh, cornstarch blended in there.
we go. Alright, next up, you want to take your eggs, three eggs at least. Go ahead and put those in there so they don't roll off. Now, some people usually go two eggs. Um, as many times you're going to batter this, you may run out. So go ahead and go three eggs. And then maybe about two tablespoons of water. There you go. Let me rinse my hand off. Go ahead and give that a good mix. Yeah, you want the water to thin it out a little bit. You don't want it too thick. Try to get as much of the white mixed in as you can. So from here, what you want to do is go ahead and take one of your strips, dredge it, or dust it on it, pat it down, try to get it all packed up in there, shake it off, and egg wash it. Go ahead and throw it back in the flour. This will get messy after a bit. Luckily, you have a sink to wash your hands in. And do it one more time. Try to keep my fingers out of the uh, egg as much as possible so I don't... There we go. So I don't build up flour mitts if you keep getting your egg and on your fingers and you go into the flour here you end up getting what they call flour mitts all right so twice in the dredger it's okay if they fall apart like that just try to keep them from doing some We'll do one more and then uh, I'll continue the rest. So again, cover it, mash it down in there. Shake it off. Try not to shake it too hard because cube steak does fall apart pretty easily. I'm dredge on this side. That's kind of why you want to get rid of the whites as much because... Uh, Notice that there's a dry spot here or there. That's where the white doesn't stick to the flour. Pat it down. One more time. And add as you uh, need to if you run out of uh, egg yolk or, or I mean egg wash or your flour mixture. Just add more to it. Go. 
So that's that one. Let me go ahead and do the rest of them. We'll be back in a bit. So as you can see, the wet hand, dry hand method doesn't work well with somebody who can only use one hand. So there's my uh, flower mitts. I'm going to let these sit for about five minutes or so, and then we'll start frying them up. So we'll see you in just a bit. Okay, so I got my trusty uh, deep dish fryer over here. Uh, the grease has warmed up. Uh, it's about an inch deep or so. So what I'm going to do is do these in batches. You want to go ahead and put them in there. And I did say earlier I was going to shallow fry them, but it looks like it would work out to deep fry them. So I'm going to do about four at a time. Let them sit in there for about five minutes or so, and they should be done. Back in a bit. I said earlier five minutes, but it actually takes about two and a half. After about a minute, I flip them over. You want to cook them until they come out golden like that. You don't want to overcook them until they turn dark. Just set them over on a wire rack when you're done to let them drain. And put in your next batch. Make sure you put it in away from you so if it does fall in, it doesn't splash toward you. Like so. It decided to want to stick to the tongs and drop in. Again. Alright, we'll just let those three cook for a moment, and uh, we'll do the last batch. So, we'll be back after a while. Alright, so I took the uh, oil off the eye. It's sitting over the side to cool. Um, I'll cover it up and use it later on in different recipes until it gets too old to use. And um, right now I have small pan on the stove here I'm about to put in a half a stick of butter as soon as I get it unwrapped go ahead and let that melt down what we're going to do is go ahead and make the uh, roux for the uh, gravy I did keep about a half cup to about a, actually I kept about a third cup of the flour that I dredged in I made sure I didn't get any of the egg it's also it'll have some of the flavoring in it so get yourself uh, some whole milk this kind of is not by measurement it's pretty much a by eye recipe <clears throat> I got about as much of the egg out of the flour as I possibly could. So I'll use that to make the roux. So let me wait till the uh, butter melts down and we'll be back in a bit. Alright, the water's, I'm sorry, the butter is melted down. You want to go low on this. Like I said, my stove goes from low to high in increments of two. I put mine on two, so a little bit at a time, don't put a lot in there, maybe a, I don't know this is going to fall on me, see about a quarter of the flour each time, use a slotted spatula so you can mash it down in the butter and it'll break it apart. Keep doing this until I form a bit of a paste. I'm 
in this first board. There we go. Add a little bit more. You don't need much of it, just because if you put too much flour in here, you'll never get the right consistency to make the gravy. It'll get too thick. Now you don't want too much lump in your uh, gravy. Lumps are bad when it comes to sawmill gravy. So you kind of want to mash down as many lumps as you can before you start adding the milk. Once the milk is added, it will definitely cool down real quick until the milk comes to a boil. And then it'll take a little while for it to thicken up. So let me let that go for a few moments until the uh, starchiness cooks out of it, and we'll be back in a bit. All right, the uh, grit, the roux is about where I want it, so we'll start adding in the milk. I'm going to put about uh, two cups in there first. Say about that much. And just stir, stir, stir until it thickens up. Don't get too crazy with it because it will go over the edge. So just lightly pull your uh, spatula through it and it will mix itself. So this is going to take a few moments. So... We'll be back in just a moment. All right, so it's just the right thickness. You can add more pepper to it if you want. Um, right now with the seasoning that's in it, it tastes pretty good to me. So uh, we'll go ahead and, I went ahead and turned the uh, stove top off on this. I'm just let it residual cook and then I'll push it off the side when it starts getting too thick. So as usual, if you try my recipes, please let me know how they turn out. And until next time, make sure you hit that like button though. But until next time, we will see you next week. Have a great week and a great weekend. Bon appetit.